How does the narcissist cope with you moving on? Shalom, this is the Blood Saves. Welcome to the Blood Saves channel. I welcome you in. Wherever you are in the world, I welcome you in. How does the... How does an empty shell cope with someone moving on? L let's examine that by... Um, getting you guys to look through the lens of the narcissist. Someone with childlike emotions. How would you, as a child, like for your friend to move on after a disagreement? After you, you guys aren't talking to each other? You're not going to want to see your side of doing anything wrong. Because children... Uh, it's hard for for kids to reference what they've done wrong, anything outside themselves. This is why in the right household with loving parents are going to teach you empathy. They're going to, uh, as you mature, they're going to cultivate your empathy. And hopefully by late adolescence the, that you're self-aware of how you affect people around you. But the narcissist has childlike emotions and they don't want you they don't want you to move on because they're they're in perpetual mo uh, motion of moving on themselves from themselves. They they don't want to introspect. They they're not they're not aware of how they affect they affect you so secretly they're hoping you come back so they can play with you they're not going to let their current supply know but they want to play with you while you mrs b still sweep everything they did under the rug and this is what they're thinking, guys, because that's what the mov the movie says. They they miss your virtues and how you made them feel, how those virtues made them feel, but they don't miss you as a person. They don't want you to benefit from that, and then to see you benefiting someone else. They have a selfish, selfish, childlike mentality with childlike emotions. Try to look through, uh, look through with the lens of a child. They're not going to want uh, the friend to have other friends outside of them. They miss how um, you made them feel. They want you to come back and play with them, but the other friends, the enablers around them are helping with the, the movie of, uh, well, there's something wrong with you. You know, why things ended up uh, and it has to do all with you. You see, the narcissist, they want, they want their cake and they want to eat it too. They want Mrs. B back and Mrs. B taking all the blame for it. Why? Because they wallow in untruth. The false nar narrative is the untruth. The truth makes them feel vulnerable. The truth is, is what they try to run from. You know, from themselves. They, they don't want to look within and, and figure out uh, what they they did wrong. That that hurts, you know. That hurts. They don't want to go there. They're they're moving on from themselves. So narcissist uh, and then enablers around them. Let's say let's say you developed e empathy. You grew up in a, a caring, uh, loving family. And you're a teenager, and you're you're at school in the lunchroom, and 
uh, you know how vicious kids can get in groups. They all need uh, to learn. They all have childlike emotions. But let's say you're a late adolescent sitting amongst your friends who are a few years younger. And they don't like this kid named Billy sitting in the corner by himself there. You know, they feel threatened by him because he's a loner, for, for example. And somehow, somehow, going to let their friends know that Billy is uh, threatening them. They, they just, they don't know how to deal with it. So they don't respond to what Billy says. And one picks up on that. And now they're all ignoring Billy because they don't know how to handle their vulner vulnerability that they that they feel with Billy. You don't know too much of Billy. You don't know the angle he's coming from. That empathy that you you learned and cultivated, being seventeen, eighteen, not like fourteen and fifteen, uh, like your. Uh, like your younger friends, students that are, are there. You know what I'm saying? At this age, you may not understand Billy yet, but you're going to, you're not going to leave him hang, leave him hanging. You're, you know, and you're, you're going to um, respond to him and, and not make Billy feel like he did something wrong. And so, if a narcissist is in that group, a lot of times, enablers are going to follow suit. They're going to be apt to kind of following um, the crowd. Even though empathy is saying, huh, you know, empathy says, empath empathy tells people that that would hurt me. So I'm not going to do this to someone because I know doing this w would hurt me. The narcissists don't do this. They, they don't know this. The narcissists don't go through this. So back to looking through the lens of a child, the narcissist always want you to come back and play. Uh, their childlike emotions isn't going to let their partner know, per se. They're greedy like children, but they're going to want Mrs. B to sweep everything under the rug. Now, Mrs. B, she has also strongholds that the devil has put into her. She doesn't want to introspect either <laughs> she's she doesn't want to learn on the truth she's all for jumping into the abyss of the untruth with with enablers and, and the narcissist because she doesn't want to deal with what actually happened she's she's willing to even blame everything on herself the untruths this is what happens to Mrs. B, guys. Mrs. A moves on because she forgives. Mrs. B doesn't move on. And the narcissist is, a, is aware of this. So what you have to do with the narcissist, guys, is to move on and pray for them to introspect. And when I say pray for the narcissist, guys, let's get this clear. The ship of the ship of ever getting back with a narcissist has sailed. Understand this. I don't want you to pray for the narcissist to repent so you can get back with the narcissist. We know the kingdom of heaven and its principles. If you don't repent, you're not going to you're not going to get into the kingdom of heaven. 
This is why we pray for people, guys. And I don't care how many strongholds you have in in you from the devil. The devil doesn't want you looking within, tearing those strongholds down. The devil wants you to continue to move on from the truth. This is what's happening in the world, guys. And, and so you see it in, you know, mean little girls, mean little boys, or you, you see, <clears throat> you, you see the childlike emotions and how people act in their untruth. You can see this, guys. Uh, let's say, for for instance, a narcissist has a golden child, and and you yoke with a narcissist with a golden child. You see the childlike emotions with a child, with actual uh, with an actual child emotions running the household together over you, because. A golden child is an extension of the narcissist. And we learn quickly that the narcissist is going to groom this child to have authority over you. They become head of the household. You know, when we see the unhealthy parenting of, of letting that child know that they don't have to listen to you, an adult. This is part of narcissists creating narcissists. They're not being told no a lot. And so this is also why we want to pray for narcissists because I believe that more than 50% for sure of the population on earth I believe, are high in narcissism, narcissism traits, or NPD, all the way. You see it in our government, childlike emotions, it's scary. <laughs> but back to the narcissist coping with you moving on, how would a child cope with it. Guys, if they can't play with you, they don't want anyone to play with you. They don't want you you succeeding. You, you weren't healthy enough as a child wanting Chrissy to succeed after she badmouthed you, after she's not coping with why the relationship ended. You didn't see your side of, of it and that's a narcissist. They don't they don't want to see their side of it. They're running from themselves. So the flying monkeys and the enablers around the narcissist are going to help with the false narrative, the untruths. Don't be a Mrs. B and jump into the abyss because they want to play with you. Guys, do not compromise any longer. This is the devil. The devil uses strongholds in the narcissist to instill strongholds in you and to destroy you and the narcissist. We have to forgive the narcissist. We have to stop the devil. It's time we take the authority in us. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, get the Holy Spirit. Repent. It's crucial that you repent. Guys, pray with me. Ready? Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for all the listeners here. We we know where two or more are gathered are gathered in your name. You're in the midst. God, we thank you for this time. 
I place a hedge of protection around everyone that's listening right now. I plead the blood of Jesus down over all the listeners. I pray for everybody today to repent. This is what I pray for in the name of Jesus, for everyone to repent. We're all sinners, guys. Repent of your sins and mean it. And for those of you that don't have the holy fire in them, ask Jesus into your heart. Right afterwards, it will change your life. If it can change my life, it can change yours. So, protect us in the name of Jesus. We know the devil is already defeated. So teach us how to take the authority within us and to forgive the narcissist, to forgive those who hurt us, and to bless our enemies because we know who it is. Bless the people, bind the enemies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be blessed, guys. Shalom.